Today I want to talk about external storage options for the M4 Mac Mini base model. Now in my previous video, I did discuss upgrading the internal storage on your M4 Mac Mini base model and how that did not go well for me due to receiving a bad SSD. Now in this video, I'm going to compare a couple of different products. SSK was kind enough to send over both an enclosure and an NVMe for us to test, but I did also purchase a separate enclosure and a separate NVMe to directly compare this to. So without further ado, let's hop into a quick unboxing of the SSK enclosure and NVMe. We're going to get everything put together and set up, and then we're going to hop right into the testing. So here we have the SSK HEC401 40 gigabyte enclosure. This is what the packaging looks like, and it is offered in both the color black as well as silver if you would like it to match your Apple product. Now, the first thing we're greeted with when we open this up is the actual enclosure itself, and it's just inside of like a plastic bag. And then when we open this up, you'll see that the enclosure actually comes with the enclosure itself. And then it's also inside of this actual like bumper or protective case. It actually has a really nice finish on it. It looks good. It does not feel cheap at all. And I really like that they included this bumper so that if you wanted to take it with you somewhere, you get a little bit of protection and it keeps it from just getting scuffed up. Now, if we take this off, you will see that it is solid black. It's made of aluminum. And then there are rubber feet on the bottom. So you shouldn't have any problems with the staying in place if you choose not to use the actual bumper. Now, it does does have just a single USB-C port as well as an LED so that you can see if the hard drive has any kind of activity while you're trying to use it. And then in the box, you also get a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable and you get a Phillips screwdriver and that's gonna be used to take the single screw out of the bottom of the enclosure in order to put your NVMe in it. And then the last thing we get is a thermal pad as well as a instruction manual. Moving over to the NVMe they sent, they did send a one terabyte 2280 drive, and this is PCIe fourth gen. It's rated at 7,400 megabytes per second for its read write speeds, but when we put this in the actual enclosure they sent over, we're probably gonna get about half that because we are limited to the 40 gigabits per second. Now in the packaging, you're gonna get a user manual as well as some screws if you were gonna put this in a desktop computer. The drive itself comes with a little bit of a thermal pad here on the top that's built into the sticker. The back has another sticker that has some information on it about the actual drive itself itself. And then you also get another Phillips screwdriver. Now in terms of installation, all you need to do is just take out the bottom screw on the SSK enclosure and that's going to separate the top and the bottom pieces where we can then get access to install the NVMe. Now taking a closer look at the actual components inside of the enclosure, you'll see that it does come with a rubber we'll call it a grommet, and that's what's gonna hold the SSD in place. And it kind of just plugs into the holes in the board depending on the size of NVMe that you have. Now, there are other designs where you actually can use like a threaded screw, but for the purposes of this one, it does use the actual plug style and there's no screwdriver needed to actually install anything. Now, if we take a look at the lid, it does have a slot where you can put your thermal pad. I'm gonna put the thermal pad right on top of the actual NVMe when we get this installed. That way everything lines up good, but you can also just stick it right to the lid and call it good. And then one thing to note for installation is there is a slot in the actual plug and you're gonna to wanna to put the end of the NVMe in that slot and then push it down into the actual board inside the enclosure to secure it. Now, the chipset that this is using is the Asmedia 2464, and that's a really good chipset, so this should work out well. After you get the NVMe secured, we just need to put the thermal pad on, and like I said previously, I'm just gonna stick mine right to the top of the NVMe. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna place the lid or the bottom in this case, back on the actual enclosure. And then we're gonna put that Phillips screw back in and make sure everything is nice and buttoned up. Now I do wanna mention the size of this is really small and portable. It will fit in your pocket and you can't tell that it's actually in your pocket while it's in your pocket and that's really nice. So they've done a really good job here. You can see I have my Galaxy S24 Ultra and it is a very small footprint in comparison to my cell phone.
Now switching over to the enclosure that I purchased with my own money, it is a colory 40 gigabit per second enclosure. You also get a USB to USB-C cable. In this one, you get two screwdrivers, a flathead, as well as a torque screwdriver, and then you get a quick start guide. Next, you get the enclosure, and it is inside of this bag or like a travel case. And the enclosure itself is physically much bigger than the SSK enclosure. And this one is also held down with four screws instead of just the one on the bottom of the SSK enclosure. It does have rubber feet on the bottom as well. Overall, the build quality on this one at first glance is really good. Opening this up, we'll see that the top part also has a space for thermal pads to be. And then if we take a closer look at the actual board itself, we'll see that it uses the same chipset as the SSK model, which is the Asmedia 2464. This is the NVMe that I'm gonna be putting inside of this enclosure. I did also purchase this with my own money. And then one big difference between the Colory enclosure and the SSK enclosure is this one is using an actual screw to hold down the NVMe. Now again, it does have a slot that you need to put the NVMe in, but that is one of the big differences. It does come with two sets of thermal pads. And one thing that's weird is you have to put this little tiny square one on top of the long one in order for it to touch the top of the actual enclosure to transfer the heat. And so we'll see here in our testing how well that actually works out. So now that we got everything put together and hooked up, we're gonna run through a series of tests. The first thing I did was test the read-write speeds using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and you'll see here that they're basically identical. And then I switched over to using Amorphous Disk Mark, and we'll see that we almost get the exact same results again, regardless of the enclosure and the NVMe. So I think that you're gonna have no problems using these in terms of trying to edit from the drive or transferring files or you know whatever your use case may be from a read-write speed perspective. I did also try and copy some files over, and when I took this 20 gig video and moved it over to both drives, it took like, seconds and so i'm just showing it to you here on the ssk because it was virtually identical on the color enclosure as well i haven't had any problems at all with the ssk drive or the ssk enclosure now i have used it both as my home folder or like my primary drive and i've also used it as just an external drive where i was saving all of my files for youtube and other things on the drive and then i was using the color enclosure as my home folder or primary drive now the color enclosure actually did not hold up that well it got very hot upon further investigation i noticed that the thermal pads inside of the color enclosure the ones that came with it they weren't very good quality they basically just disintegrated as soon as i touched them and that was after just like maybe a day or two's worth of use because i noticed that the drive kept disconnecting from my mac mini and so i'd be in the middle of editing a video and while all my files were stored on the ssk enclosure with the ssk mvme it still it would just overheat it would get so hot that not hot enough to like burn your hand but it was like it was hot. It would just basically disconnect itself until it cooled down enough and then it would auto reconnect and you basically have to stop what you're doing because I have all of my applications installed on the external enclosure. I actually ended up swapping them. Okay, so we just got done cloning the drive over. I was using this previously as my home folder and I've switched over to using the SSK now as my home folder and we're gonna see if that makes any kind of improvement. Now, I have noticed right off the bat that the boot time on the SSK is almost instant. When I use this drive, it will get to the login screen, but after I type in my password, it hangs for a long time. You get a spinning wheel. And I'll show that to you right here. On the SSK, it just logs in and everything works perfectly. So I used the SSK as my internal home folder, and then I started using the Colory as my drive that holds all of my files. And instead of plugging it directly into the computer, I actually plugged it into my Avanki Fusion Dock Pro One Plus dock, which is gonna limit the speeds on that to 10 gigabits per second. And that has helped it stay a lot cooler, and I haven't had any problems with it actually disconnecting or throttling or anything like that. I have the SSK here and it's plugged directly into the back of my, my Mac Mini. I haven't had any of the lagging problems, so the computer logs in instantaneously, and it also just functions 
normal like it would if you were just using the normal internal drive like apps open quickly there's no delay and i found that when i use the colory one there is a little bit of delay like it will work but it just it just seems slower opening up final cut is really slow like it takes a good couple of seconds before you get the little splash screen where it says final cut pro and gives you the version number before it actually opens the application and on the ssk one i don't even see the little pop-up that gives you the version number the app opens so quickly so I, I don't know if maybe i just got a bad color enclosure or what but the colory one is more expensive than the ssk one and in my opinion i would just go with the ssk drive and the ssk enclosure if you're looking for one of these because i haven't had a single issue and it stays pretty cool to the touch and it's just functionally it's been great i will say that i did swap the drives so i took the ssk drive out of the ssk enclosure and then i put it in the color enclosure and i wanted to see if i could reproduce the same issue and i did notice that with the ssk drive in the color enclosure there was a little bit of lag similar to what i showed you previously in booting so when i booted from the ssk drive with the SSK enclosure, it was like the internal drive. It was like near instant. And when I use the colory one, I would get a little spinning wheel at login after I type my password in, and it would take a minute to get to the actual desktop. I had that same problem with the SSK drive in the colory enclosure, which leads me to believe there's just an issue with the enclosure. Because when I put the team group drive in the SSK enclosure, I didn't have any problems. It did get slightly warmer than what it gets with the SSK drive, but functionally, it performed okay. I didn't really have too many issues with it. It didn't disconnect. I ended up just staying with the SSK enclosure and their NVMe for my primary drive. So that's where I've moved my home folder to. And that's how I'm operating day to day. And then I put the team group drive back in the color enclosure but instead of plugging it directly into my Mac mini into like a Thunderbolt port or one of the USB ports in the front, I ended up plugging it into my Avanki dock. And that's gonna limit the speed to 10 gigabits per second, even though it's rated for 40. And that has actually helped keep the drive cool. And in terms of like just transferring files, you don't really see a difference. I mean, we're talking like seconds, like it's not that big of a deal at all, at least for me personally. And for me, that has created the most functional workspace. Now, depending on the drive that you decide to buy uh, and put in whatever enclosure you buy, you know, your results are going to be completely different from mine. But what I can tell you is if you do get an SSK NVMe and you do get their enclosure, you shouldn't have any issues because I've been doing this for a little over a month and I haven't had it overheat a single time. So to bring everything together, I really think that the products that SSK provided for our testing, they are actually really good products. I personally have not really heard of SSK. They're not like a huge brand here in the United States, but I am very happy that they reached out and that they were able to send these products over. I will link everything down in the description. They're available on Amazon. And like I said, I haven't had a single problem with them at all. The build quality is really good on the enclosure. The SSD does not have DRAM, whereas the Team Group one does. And I don't know if maybe that's why the Team Group one is getting so much hotter than the SSK one. But if you're just looking for something that's going to work, like just functionally, work you don't care about all the specs on paper you're just going to move files and install some applications and stuff you're not trying to do anything crazy this is going to work fine for most people it works perfectly fine for me and like i said i haven't had any issues with this setup i am really sad that i the color one with the team group drive didn't work out because that stuff was not cheap the ssk stuff's actually cheaper and it's better so it's like, why would you spend more money to get something that's inferior? Yeah, if you have any questions about anything that we covered in the video, just hit me up down in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. I'll put links for everything down in the video description. So if there's anything that I may have missed in the video, you can go check out the actual website for whatever product it is that you're interested in. And I would really appreciate it if you take the time to like the video and then subscribe to my channel. It really helps get these videos pushed out to a broader audience. But that's about all I have have for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.